The Earth's ice caps are melting, and growing evidence suggests that global warming is causing the sea ice in the Arctic to retreat. But the sheer size and extreme conditions of the polar regions makes it difficult for scientists to cover these areas in detail. Cryosat 2, the European Space Agency's Earth Explorer mission, aims to fill these gaps. It will measure both the size of the ice sheets and the thickness of the ice to the nearest centimetre. This important information will help scientists understand the impact of climate change, with the UK, through Professor Duncan Wingham at University College London, leading Cryosat's science team. Cryosat is important because it will tell us how the changes in the Arctic are going to spread out and impact lower latitudes where most of us live. That, that's the object of the exercise. During its five-year mission, Cryosat-2 will orbit the North and South Poles every hour. Perhaps the simplest way of thinking about this is to imagine a ball of wool. Every time the satellite goes round the Earth, we lay down another strand on the ball. And so after about a month, we have a lot of strands, and in, a, in essence, we've now covered the Earth, and so we start again. And so each month, we get a picture of what the ice is doing, and doing this month after month after month after month gives us a picture of what happens, for example, over a year. And then doing this year after year gives us a picture of how the ice is changing over, say, five years. Melting ice affects ocean circulation, and this could influence our climate. So it's essential to measure the changes in ice cover accurately. Cryosat's instruments include a radar altimeter with unprecedented resolution, ten times better than those on current satellites. It will use the bounced echo of a signal from the sea ice and the ocean to build up a 3D view of the ice. After the loss of Cryosat-1 due to a launcher failure in 2005, a replacement, updated satellite was immediately given the go-ahead, and EADS Astrium rebuilt the craft. This noisy machine is an autoclave. It's basically a giant oven, high temperature, high pressure, and it's used to bake the parts of a spacecraft so that they're bonded together and resilient enough to withstand the rigors of space and of being in orbit. And it's exactly the same process that was used to build Cryosat 2. Compared to other spacecraft, however, Cryosat 2 is an unusual shape. It's not the usual boxy shape of a satellite with uh, solar arrays sticking out to, to the side. In this case, we've built the solar panels on the top surfaces of the satellite, and that's so that it can pick up power from the sun regardless of the direction that the sun is shining on it. And that will enable it, as it goes through its mission, to power the instruments to make the measurements we need to make. All of Cryosat's data will be received by a ground station at Karuna in northern Sweden. The data will be processed and distributed to 150 scientists around the world, including Catherine Giles from the Centre for Polar Observation and Modelling. Her research group is at UCL, University College London. The team at University College London will be getting the data as soon as it's transmitted from the satellite. And what they'll be doing is looking at the various processing steps this data goes through, from becoming a measurement made in space to becoming a parameter that describes part of our environment, whether that is the ocean height or the thickness of the ice cover. Information from Cryosat 2 on the Arctic and the land masses of Greenland and Antarctica will give scientists fresh insight into our changing climate. It will also update current predictions that the thin crust of sea ice around the North Pole could disappear by the end of the century.